everybody. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast. We're coming to you live from round two of the XTC on GSP. We're on the second round of the final stage. Uh, this round, I am joined by <laughs> Kenneth Lyons. Hello. And by one of our friends who's going to need to pronounce his name for me. I'm going to call him Daniel, and I'm not even going to try the other name. Hey, everyone. Yeah, it's uh, Sent on the It's It's a bit complicated. It's a Hungarian name, but glad that you have me here and I can represent the Hungarian team in some capacity. That's right. The finals. So, thank you. Well, no problem. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're going to have you guys break down those lists in a minute. Uh, but before we do that, let me remind you guys that it is time to choose your champion. The polls are now open. And get to it because it looks like that resistance is really hitting on the gas. Uh, Kenneth, if you can go ahead and let me know what did uh, Peru bring. What's that resistance list? And Daniel, if you can go ahead and hit the Italian list, let me know what's going on there. It is time to choose your champion. All right, so for the Peruvian list, we have Zari Bangal in the RZ2 A-Wing, Dion's favorite, uh, with Thread Tracers, Rose Tico with C-3PO, a classic, and three Heroic Jamming Beam Red Squadron Experts. Those are the I-3 generic T-70 X-Wings. So this list is a jousting list, and boy, can it joust. All right, and on the other side... Yep. Uh, yeah, so we have a uh, pretty oh, Did we lose him? Uh, I can't hear him anymore. Daniel, return to us. Try again. <laughs> well, while, while we're waiting for him to come back, uh, we have Mirko. For the Italian team, we got Django and Zam. Pretty much a classic. It has been a staple in this meta that we've had. The double fire sprays have been uh, have been pretty good in the history of X-Wing 2.0. And this is just the newest iteration. And they, uh, they fight for the Separatists. So we have Django with Lone Wolf, Jamming Beam, Palpatine slash Sidious. Thermal detonators and false transponder codes. Zam Wessel, super efficient. Jamming beam. Count Dooku, thermal detonators and false transponder codes. Um, yeah, we'll see if those false transponder codes end up mattering too much in this matchup. If Antonio uh, ends up hitting the gas, set up some locks early to just to kind of break off those false transponder codes. Uh, could end up wasting them, but of course it does give an opportunity for the um, uh, the Separatists to be able to possibly plink in some damage if they have shots on those ships that wasted the uh, the actions. Uh, well, with C-3PO, it's not really going to be a waste because what happens is a T-70 goes like two or three forward, target log Zam, burns the codes, loses the lock. Then Rose comes in and coordinates the focus. I mean, you're right. <laughs> you still had to you still had to uh commit a resource yeah, yeah to, it loses uh, some of that efficiency in the opening yeah where you can't have the one double modded x-wing mm -hmm. but like not letting zam be able to pick your target and say no you have no mods on defense we kill you now <laughs> that's a very powerful effect i agree i agree well we will uh, we'll see how things go. And it looks like Antonio went from hitting the gas to slowing it down just a little bit. Might be mostly to make sure that Rose stays near the uh, stays near the squad. Yep, here's a coordinate. Yeah, sequencing here is a little bit suspect because now Zam can just get rid of the focus token with the jam because Zam gets to pick which comes off but mm -hmm. looks like she chose the lock I mean, the, the lock is what sticks around um you know if, past this turn we got yeah. zari trying to do a five straight uh bumping there but still gets an action because it's zari. zari that's zari's ability daniel do we have you back yet 
Uh, yeah, I've been hearing you guys all the time. Oh, yeah, when when you we asked you to me? do the the list, you got you kind of disappeared. We didn't hear you. Oh, weird. Right when it was my time to t uh, turn to talk. Okay. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's all right. Daniel, what what are your thoughts on this matchup? Uh well, obviously, this uh, double fire spray list that we all know and love. It's it's really really strong. It's a pretty standard setup, and it's really oppressive, meta defining. I I love the choice of Lone Wolf on Jungle, because I I think that. Django in comparison with baby fat uh boba his his biggest issue is the lack of passive mods mm -hmm. but now with lone wolf he has his rerolls just like his little son or hash cl clone little <laughs> <laughs> well, he, well here we go we have our first shot and Django. <laughs> Starting strong, three hits going into the T70. We got a trail mix of dice there defensively from the resistance, and the green uh, T70 is going to be taking its first shield. I believe that's Zam also. Ah, Zam, excuse me. I had the colors right and uh, everything. I just said the wrong name. All right. Sorry, sorry guys. Did Zam lose the two charges when the game started? Uh, it doesn't look like it, but she probably will once they go to spend the charges here for the card. Because I, I assume this is yeah. level tap. No, it's you should thank me. So no. so he dropped the two and then brought it back up one. So all's well that ends well. And we have another shot coming in. Three hits might actually do damage on this one. The force is available for Zam. And got one focus result. Spend the force for one. Takes two shields. All in all, a pretty good trade for the X-Wings. Two shields on Zam for one shield on a T-70. That's absolutely worth it. Oh, yeah. I mean, statistically, that's sick. That, you know, the percentage of health uh, for each, that's, that's, that is definitely in the resistance favor. Yeah. Although the resistance are now chasing the fire spray with bombs. So see what exactly happens this next turn. Because even if they turn in, those front two X-Wings probably still clip at least one thermal. It is always interesting to see how aggressive people can be with trying to avoid the bombs. Because, yeah, that's yeah. that's uh, Mirko, that's his his goal, is to is to have the chase for the thermal detonators and try to get some passive damage that way. Um, is, is there a way to avoid all of them? Some hard twos, barrel rolling. I think the initiatives, well, they're all initiative three. So he's got some flexibility there. Yeah. So like there's, you know, like rows can coordinate some boosting or some barrel rolling, but you generally don't want to be doing repositions with these X wings outside of a coordinated reposition, mm -hmm. just because they really do need mods in order to be like a presence for the turn. And if they have to close their wings, they're not a very offensive presence. So, like, sometimes, like, in this case, he might just eat the two thermals, or might even be one if he turns into Django. Mm -hmm. Which, while not great, it, like, for the positioning and having the focus for a potential shot is probably better. And we are we are waiting here. Uh, one common strategy for the double fire sprays, of course, is to is to create a, a kind of like cycle. You'll have one coming in uh, from the front, while the other one is is giving chase. And as the target, you know, the enemy ends up switching targets to the one that feels like it's more obvious. It becomes the one that starts utilizing that back arc as well. So the betting yeah. has has officially closed. Go ahead, Kenneth. Sorry about that. I was just agreeing with you. The, the cycle. So the betting the, has... The normal cycle you see is Zam comes in, gets her shenanigans off, and then runs away, and Django clean, like finishes off the ship, Zam wounded. Then when they go after Django, Zam comes back in and gets her shenanigans back up and then runs away. 
In this case, he started a little far away for a proper, you know, in and out every turn. Mm -hmm. But you also kind of want to keep Lone Wolf on Django active because that is a passive double mod. Yeah, and that's when people who bring Lone Wolf, that is definitely something that you have to manage. And here is the hard two. Now, as those, those turns come in, I do want to go ahead and point out what the betting for this round is. We have uh, Antonio is the 55% favorite right now to Mirko's 45 uh, right now in the early betting. So we'll see how things end up shaking up here. Uh, looks like Rose just kind of hanging out behind the T-70s. Just being yep. being around, probably getting coordinated at a lock, I would guess, here. Looks like it. Also, there is a thermal detonator that was dropped, and it looks to me like it's in range of those you know, front two T-70s, like I mentioned. And it's only the uh, only one of them, the one that was uh, yes. dropped with the two straight. Just so much efficiency in that three-point bomb. Especially with Dooku sitting in range two with his little cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> Turning the bomb into a crit. Got the smugness in that art on Dooku. Just like it, <laughs> it completely tells the story of everything you ever know about that card. It's just, hmm, yes, you wanted to do something. Well, what if you didn't? <laughs> Superior look of smugness. Are interesting here. We're getting Django turning to the left, um, right in front of the asteroid. Now looking at the guides. Let's take a peek here. Will he? Uh, he'll be able to turn or bank next turn without uh, without clipping. Should be fine. A straight maneuver will likely end up clipping, and proves that the bank fits by fitting a boost there as well. So now. Basically has a choice between a hard turn to the left or right next turn. Um, likely going to the left, kind of giving chase, we think. Probably, although that gets him pretty close to that corner. I think if Zam turns in, Django turns in. And if Zam goes away, Django turns away. Mm -hmm. Like, the fire sprays are going to be in unison here because you kind of have to pick one yep. to go after. Yeah, but it, 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 to me it looks like as if the double fire spray player is waiting for the resistance player to com commit on one of the fire sprays. Yeah, that sounds about right. It My is cat always has decided to knock over everything. One I, moment. <laughs> um, it is always interesting to see people's play versus the uh, versus the double fire spray. Um, you know, there's there's different schools of thought. You kind of switch targets as you as they kind of come to you. You know, as as the enemy cycles, you cycle as well. Uh, sometimes, if you have fast enough ships, you can maybe bum rush them, catch them off guard, and try to mostly kill one. Uh, but the trouble usually comes in in the very end game is if they get away and you continue to chase and you're kind of being uh, being peppered. Uh, by the other fire spray and you're ignoring them that's when bad things can happen and both of these fire sprays have fantastic end game potential because lone wolf and the force on django is as daniel mentioned is passive double mods and while it's not quite boba fett level of passive mods it is it's still good and zam with you know the double tap free target locks it's she also has the passive mods with the force like they in the end game, both of those ships can hold their own quite well. Yeah, and it's, even though it's not Boba Fett level of passive mods, he's harassing the dice of the opponent as well. Yeah. And the T uh... seventies. Go ahead. W without R four, ah, oh, sorry. So without without R four, they don't have a ton of blue maneuvers to play the mind games of the. W will I go a blue maneuver with Django or not? Also, the uh, let's not forget the the rebel captive effect from um, Chancellor Palpatine, where if you shoot Django and you're close enough, he can just stress you. Yeah. Palpatine is that... one of those cards. It's like a sleeper good card because that's also an I six coordinate from Django. Let's not forget. Yeah, it's fantastic, and it can. 
combo well with Dooku. That use Dooku for a thermal, and then with you flip Palpatine, coordinate them with Sidious, and recharge the force of Dooku so he can smugly control the dice of the opponent again. Yeah, twice the, in the round. The Sidious coordinate is also just like it's coordinate target lock focus if you want it. Because according to the lock, yeah. I get a stress for a focus. Like, it's just good action efficiency on a perfect information coordinate. Yeah, so with, with those two force users, even though I'm all for passive mods, the Lone Wolf is a curious choice because with Lone Wolf, you don't want to keep your fire space close, but the to two force users love to be close to each other because of the coordinate and the force recharge. So I have played this list twice, so you can take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. Okay. But Lone Wolf to me is a um, an end game card. It's not a mid to early game card. Like you play your double fire spray list the same as you would without it. And then if Django gets to the end game or he has to disengage from Zam, then he has just a passive mod. Yeah. Like now, it's not a, a card to play for. It's a it's a just a ancillary benefit that's really strong. Mm -hmm. I agree. I I usually don't play for it because I can't I can't keep them far from each other. Ooh, it looks like a hard commit to Django. All right, and yeah, no. yeah, including including boosts, or at least for the front one, maybe trying to get a block there. Uh, but as as we get these moves here, I do want to take a moment and and talk about the cause that uh, that we're trying to help out uh, with today. Um, and uh, shout out to uh, Ken Bartosz. He's one of the organizers for the XTC. And um, if you want want a little preview of of the cause that uh, that he's trying to raise money for, we want to support as well. Uh, exclamation point donate. We'll talk about it a little bit more in the next. Um, planning phase. I was just trying to get a little bit more information. We talked about it a little bit uh, in the first round. We'll talk some more in the next round and also talk about what we here at GSP are going to do to help with that cause. But let's go ahead and see what we got going on here. Um, yeah, we had some turn-ins from the X-Wings and from Zari. Zari bumped into an X-Wing, but because she's Zari, she can still focus boost off of it. Mm-hmm. Rose not coordinating, going for the double calculate. And... Yeah, it looks like Zam didn't turn. She just went straight. Interesting choice. All right, boost into the right. This is, I find I'm a little, oh, okay. I'm worried now, just a little bit. Yeah, because both those fire sprays are in the same spot, so you don't really have to commit to one to get shots anymore. Uh-huh. But that lead X-Wing has no mods, so it might not do much. Looks like Django's deciding to just take a focus. Yep. Looks like he had two ships in range, which means you'll have two ships coming, uh, two shots coming back as well. Although one of those shots is Zari, and it raises the question, does she use a tracer here, even though there's only two target locks you'll get off of it, just to burn the false transponder codes? Because Django's codes are still active. Well, we got three hits coming in here from Django, and going to be getting all three shields on that red T-70 to start. Zari has that choice. Um, clearing the codes? That sounds interesting. But, like, for a tracer, though? He's doing it. I'm not it. sure it's worth it. He's doing it. Oh. One of each. Spend for two. I mean, essentially, what it, what it gets you is one lock, right? But the order the order in which you lock matters because you can determine who actually gets to keep it. So you would lock with Zari yeah. first, I'm assuming. Yes. So it hits. Well, let's let's see what the 
what happens here. That's something that, that that's a heads up play, by the way. So Zari goes first, and yep, yep, gets jammed off because of the false transponders, and the lead T70 now gains a target lock on uh, on Django as well. And that's mm -hmm. it for the attacking, or sorry, for uh, for the target mm -hmm. locks. We got one last shot here. Has a lock okay. set up. Hit crit. Is he going to spend it? Does. That is an aggressive play, but unable to convert. Django still has a focus token, but not able to use it. Lone Wolf reroll. Got one. That's a shield off of Django. All in all, not a terrible trade for the fire sprays because you have uh, one shield on Django for three on their next wing. It did cost you your codes, but like you took a tracer shot and only got the one lock off that tracer, so it's not a horrible, horrible outcome. Not to mention again, prime bombing position from Django. Yeah, now if the resistance player wants to keep committing on Django, now he has to worry about those yeah. thermals. And that big rock in the middle kind of makes it hard to come in on Zam. Well, they can cast a wide net on the two sides of the rock, but yeah, that, that rock is definitely a definitely bad use for the resistance nest. All right, so as we're waiting here, let's go ahead and, and take a moment to talk about the fundraiser that's happening today. So um, one of the – so here's here's all the connection points because I think it's important for us to understand how we got here, okay? So uh, Ken is one of the main organizers for this year's XTC, uh, a.k.a. Bartosh uh, W. If you guys know him, he's very active in the X-Wing community. And uh, one of his teammates, one of the Polish players, uh, his son – um, basically at birth had, uh, had a brain tumor. And, uh, one of the things that he's decided that he wants to do a, uh, wants our help with is, is a fundraiser for this X-Wing player, uh, to pay for some of the, um, me, th this kid, unfortunately, when you have a child that has, uh, these type of needs, there's years, years of, uh, of rehabilitation and therapy, uh, in order to try to, you know, get a semblance of, of comfort for that child and that is the um th that's the goal for today is to help out that uh that family and uh this is something that that ken uh from my understanding kind of surprised the x-wing player with said I, I would like to do this for you and on the xtc hub if you type exclamation point hub you can actually get the link to the stream where they're gathering all the donations uh, for that, and we we did set up an exclamation point donate link, but it sends you to their donation page. So if you want to give, uh, that would be great. And I challenge you guys. I want to find out uh, kind of where where are they in the donation um, the, the, the and the donation levels, and uh, and then I'm gonna set up a challenge for you guys, and and we'll see see what we can do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get get that. Uh, Take take some peeks here while um, while while Daniel and Kenneth uh, give us some more analysis. But we have plenty of X-wing coming up. Looks like they're ready to go here. System phase should be coming up here, guys. I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go incognito here for a minute. Kenneth and Daniel, go ahead and take the wheel. All right, the wheel. We can drive this how we want now. <laughs> so I guess two bombs are coming from Django, right? Uh, looks like it. I'm just wondering if Zam is gonna turn in or out. I don't really think Zam can afford to turn out, because that puts her facing the board edge with no option to boost to adjust. So the X-Wings can just go at her.
It might actually be interesting to see like a one bank left from Zam. Because yeah, it puts her in the corner, but if you commit hard to her, she just boosts out. Though it looks like Zari's taking some bombs. And the rocks. four straight, or three straight, just ignoring the rock. It was really nice of Django to direct, direct, through, direct the beef through the rocks. Yep. That's exactly what you want to do against the shit lifts this like this. Yeah, and like the fire sprays, despite being medium bases, are actually fairly maneuverable, and they can get through the rocks reasonably easily. Because yes. I believe the saying goes, medium bases always fit. <laughs> yes, that's exactly the thing that I I say during my matches with medium ships. The like, amount of times I've had do... a Boba Fett just roll up to me and go, this boost will fit. Yeah, you just do a boost between two rocks and it's going to fit. It looks like Zari got coordinated a boost. All right, guys. Pumped. I'm sorry. I'm pumped. I, I just, I got, I'm excited. Can I say that I'm excited? I'm sorry, Dion. Are you excited about something? I, I'm excited about something because I think, <laughs> I think we, we, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna help destroy their goal, their, their, their fundraising goal today, because I just made a realization. Conversion rates. We got you faded, goal. Just you wait. You wait. Uh, just let's focus on the game right now. We got some thermal detonators going off here. I don't think they're going to be in range of anybody. Mm, Looks nope. like not. Which I think is massive. Zoe was in range, but she was coordinated out of the bomb. Unlock it, boys. Unlock. Unlock. Don't just keep clicking it. Maybe they, they, they got it. Looks like they got it. Nope, they they relocked it. There it is. All right. And they just deleted the bomb aside. first. I think Django should go into Zari here, even though the X Wing has no mods. Because yeah. you know, if you strip that mod from Zari, and then Zam can just blast her in the face, could be huge. But it looks like he's going at the oh. X Wing. Yeah, what I would have done here is focus firing on Zori, praying to the dice gods that I can any kill her. But... All right, well, I mean, we got... an initiative kill is unlikely, but I guess got... still like crippling that ship is important. Three hits were rolled, one squiggle, and that red T seventy is down to two hull. Got that on the overlay, and here comes Zam now. Now, Zam will uh, will not be able to help with that red T-70. He has to switch targets. Probably going range one into Zari, I would guess. Uh, she does have a lock on the green T-70 from turn two. True that, true that. And I'm guessing probably wants to hold on to that force for defense. Yeah, but if she shoots Zari, she'd probably shoot Zari twice. Because she has four yep. charges. She almost certainly put the double tap. And here's the range one into Zari. <laughs> Two Ooh, hits and a seems crit. Real good. Pro you spend that force for every day of the week. Temptation. I, I would do it as well. He's thinking about it. There's hesitation here. Got it. Yep. Three hits and a crit. Two evades. Spend the focus for the third one. Only takes a shield. Now here comes the psychology and the uh, the, the strategy with uh, playing against Zam. You know, most likely you better mean business is sitting there for Zari. Do you shoot anyway? To, I mean, you, oh, you, you shoot this X wing first because if the, you better mean business goes into that rather than Zari, you're happy. 
And here we go. You got two hits. Spend the focus for three. Staying aggressive into Zam. Gonna get two shields off there. Those are shields down on Zam Wessel. Gary plays for a fire spray. And you have, you better mean business as the uh, card. We are going to see the bonus. the bonus attack here as well. Two hits. Has a lock out there, as you stated earlier, Kenneth. Going to use it, but not going to get a hit result. And that was already came free to shoot at them. And we'll see what the, the defensive role here is. Two evades. It's got nothing on that bonus attack, guys. Nothing. Zari, range one. Only a single hit. And gonna get another damage. Guys, that's, uh, I believe that's half points. Yeah. That, that, that's that's where... Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. That's where Hall Upgrade is huge. You would still have your points. So right now, Peru has an edge. This is this is massive. This is absolutely massive. Yeah, that and I think these fire sprays are pretty out of position, like especially Django. Django is not in a great spot. But like I don't see a way to keep chasing Zam where you can like force Django to make decisions. Because if you go hard on Django, Zam can just pretty easily get away. I agree. 100% agree. Now, as we're in this planning phase, let me let me talk to you guys about this goal. All right. I I, I made a realization. All right. So their their goal for today is 10,000 Polish dollars, which I believe are called zloty, I think. PLN is the 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 number. Now, the conversion rate for a dollar in the United States is 3.88 about four dollars for one okay so here's my challenge to you my gold squadron community okay i think we can get i i think we can help them hit their goal so if they're uh i'm just i'm on google right now looking at the the conversion so about uh two and a half thousand yeah about two and a half thousand if if we can get them to let, let's try to make a push. I will put in five hundred dollars, like five hundred American dollars, which is, um, a, really, yeah, which is, which 1500. is, yeah, which is, which is about, uh, according to Google, nineteen thirty nine. All right, Zlote. I'll put five hundred American dollars if we can get. There, you know, I'll just say, I'll just make it an even 2,000. I'll put in 2,000 Polish dollars, okay, because that's what their their uh, their donation form is for, okay. If we can reach 2,000 on their side, so if we can get basically $500 total by the end of this round, $500 total by the end of this round, I'll put in another 500. All right, so then that that will get them to four. We'll be we'll be almost at the halfway point for their goal. So let's go ahead, exclamation point, donate. Let's get it started. Collectively, there's 162 of you guys. Everybody puts in just a couple bucks. We get there real quick. Also, I do believe there are some incentives for reaching goals for the donation milestones. Yep, yep. With the the top one being a fun walk face reveal. That's that's right. And and let them know, let them know GSP sent us, all right? And then we'll I I got I have their their stream here up on my screen so I'll be able to, to watch that donation counter. So we've got an update on some uh, some games. Looks like the Swiss Separatist list beat the U.S. Empire list, ninety-eight to two hundred. Let's go! Love it. 
How dare you, sir? We lost. <laughs> I have to be unbiased. I don't. So I can <laughs> pretend to be offended by it. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Yeah. All right, so folks, help me help me keep track in uh, in the in the chat. If you could let me know how much you donated, I'll keep them. Um, I'll keep kind of a little tally because I have no way to. I don't have that the donation bar or anything like that. But it'll help me. You know, if we we get that 500 collectively as GSP, I'll drop that uh, in there as well. All right, here we go. T70s on the move. Zari bumping, but what? again, that Zari do what Zari do. You get to focus rotate off those Zari things that she does. Oh, I noticed that the donation yes. link wasn't working. One second, guys. Here, Very guys. smart so far. If Zem wants to turn or wants to go into the rocks. She's going to get blocked either way. Yeah, Zam's got nowhere to go, really. I mean, maybe a two-turn fits. Maybe. All right. I just I Over. just fixed the donation link, by the way. Everybody out there. Sorry about that. I forgot to put a space. All right. So we got some coordination happening. I mean, don't you just give one of the, the, the yellow or blue a lock? Uh, I think he's debating rolling red left to just guarantee you yeah. block all the turns. Because if you miss a block on that, like, two turn, and Zari just, or not Zari, but uh, Zam boosts out of three of those shots, it's going to feel yeah, real but bad. Then there's, the, there's the danger if you better roll in and block Zam, then Zam will have a range one shot into red. No, she might not. There we go. Well, she's just gonna shoot at green anyway. All right, Django in the corner right now, turning, boosting, trying to get out. Got a shot on Zari. Not a great shot, but into shot. All right. Looks like we are reaching for... Oh, uh, he's checking Lone Wolf. Aha. No Lone Wolf, yeah. Two hits. Ooh, there's and some damage on Zari. Half we... points. Half go. points. Current score, 46 to 41. Resistance still leading. like he's going range one into the green T-70. Only a single Ooh. hit. Not a great roll there. I think the T-70 eats the damage to keep the double mods. I, I agree. It's currently has only taken a single shield. Yep. Yeah, chooses violence. It's the Peruvian way. off the board. <laughs> And you're going to get three shots into her. Let the first one begin. Rose will have a calculate and two re-rolls. Oh, we'll just spend it. Make it two. That's a hit and a crit. If that 
doesn't get dodged. That's under the shield, and it's and it that's is. a face up card. Zam, what'd you find in the box? It's a wounded pilot. Gonna have to be rolling a dice for those actions. Let's see if it matters, because there's two fully modified T-70s coming in. One of them is at range one. And they only need to do, what, four damage? Yep. But Zam gets to shoot back if she wants. Though I think she's going to save it for the green shot. Mm-hmm. And that's why you fire with yellow first. You go, you because you might just you might just kill her here. <laughs> oh, blank out. And that's why you got target lock. Or actually, no, this is heroic. Turns out heroic's pretty good. Two hits. <laughs> Ow, the Two natties. And here's the big one. Range one. Target lock focus. You you expect Zam to end up taking two damage here. And there's the oh, full no. string. There's two hits, two, two crits. crits. Do you do the evade here? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yep. It's a, it's a best case scenario situation, I think. Looks like he's not Dooku'ing the evade. And here we I go. Do a hit and two crits coming in. Zam is on fire. Down to one. If there's a direct hit in here, it's over. We got a weapons failure for the first one. And the second one is a direct hit. Direct She's hit. off She's the board. And, and that's well, the lack of the haul upgrade again. She does get to shoot back with three dice at range one. Let's not forget. This is true. So Held on to the force. Goes. She has weapons failure. Do you Dooku here? Should have. May have? Did not. And does deal a damage. Well, heroic. heroic. Never mind. Sorry about that. Heroic doing work. Paid for its points <laughs> in this I game. I would to focus there. Because, oh, actually, that T-70 still has a focus, doesn't it? It does. Never mind. Yeah, because if it didn't, you could Dooku the focus to stop the heroic trigger. It's the situation again where you have a hull upgrade, you still have a Zam on board. Yeah. Although, to get hull upgrade on Zam, you sacrifice, like, all of your bid. And I think, in yeah. this case, given the amount of Django Zams in here, they wanted the bid for the mirror. Django versus five resistance ships still on the board. Do we think he can do it? Let's well, look on the bright side. Django will always have Lone Wolf. Fair enough. Hey, real real quickly here, Kelliana, I see that you it looks like you made a donation on the uh for, for Barnaby. Five hundred uh PLN donated to kick things off. There we go. There we go. There we go. So for for our for the matching goal, that means that we are about a quarter, about twenty five percent of the way there, I think. Maths, Google, help me. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Kaliana. Uh, and another update from Team USA. Matt Carey won 200 to 35. And what team is the Team USA playing in this round? Switzerland. Switzerland. All right. Well, Zari is uh, is moving on up, trying to get a in blocking position for Django. Here comes the resistance. I do want to comment. I believe earlier in the match we had uh, someone who was, said they were familiar with the player, saying that I believe Antonio is the best player 
that Team Peru has. And right now has shown, uh, shown some good smarts, has made some great choices. And we will, um, we will continue to watch here. Got ourselves a focus barrel roll from the T70. Now remember, T70s, if they have their target that they end up firing against in their bullseye, they get to keep that third die. We'll see if that happens. But resistance right now spread, ready to essentially pounce at uh, any direction that Django ends up going. And now Django has to kill a full T70 and half another one to get the comp points. Yeah, so Django's goal here is kill red, kill green. All right, so no block is in uh, in the arc of the green T70. And basically and has the green to choose. I mean, Green T70 just... also did a blue maneuver, so it's he can't Django that shot. Mm -hmm. But if he boosts, he can Django the shot on the red T70. Maybe nullify that focus. Does decide to boost, which gives him a shot. But now he also, I think, ends up taking three more shots than he would have before. Uh, if he mm. kills red, it's probably worth it. Two hits, spends the focus modifier in the force, and only a single damage. That lives on one. He lives. That will. I'm not sure it's going to end up being worth it, Kenny. No, me either. <laughs> All right, and Zari is starting the party here. Two on two has a focus hit crit. Django has one reroll for all of these shots. So let's see when he uses it. Right now, the crit would bounce off the shields, but it's going to get guarantee one damage if nothing happens. Yeah. And it takes it. You got rolls with two rerolls. One hit. Only needs one. Spend and the calculate, calculate for two. Man, C3PO, so good. This is probably a lone wolf opportunity. Yep. And doesn't connect. That's another so that's shield. That's damage. Green T T70. Primed and ready. Three dice focus. And that's another set of three. three. Not a great spot for Django. Not where he wants to be. That's... Half points, shield card. Score now of 143 to 41. Team Peru is starting to aggressively take a lead here. Still has one more shot from downtown. Another oh, set oh. of three. Two hits and a crit. <sighs> and the crit is going to end up slipping through. What's in the box? It's a direct hit. Insult to injury, my friends. That is rough round for Django. Yeah, there was a single ship that Django could have modified the dice. And it mattered. The red out. one. And, and he didn't roll any eyeballs. Neither on defense nor offense. Man. Well, I think right there, that is extremely telling. Extremely telling of uh of what we're gonna end up uh seeing in this matchup antonio just needs to play conservatively and just clean it up needs to push through four more damage into django to finish this game and again to sidetrack this to team usa it looks like daniel won 200 to 119 All right. versus the swiss uh i forget what exactly what game or what faction he was playing against so that means we're sitting, uh, the United States sitting at 2-1 in this round, trying to secure another team win. And Django now has to shoot down more than 100 points to win. 
Awar15, thank you so much. Yeah, I... I will fully admit I have lost games like this where they have the one or two health Django that somehow manages to solo an entire list, but mm -hmm. like this the Peruvian player has played out of his mind. And like I don't think he's gonna let that happen to him. Yeah, he he's he's has had really good board control. Now, since red and rose are stressed, they're most likely going to use blue maneuvers, so you won't be able to use Django on them. Yeah. And Django's best escape maneuvers are white anyway. So, like, yeah. if you have a blue maneuver, he's probably still taking shots, which, like, he wants to not take shots more than he wants to get his ability off here. couple of other updates as we're waiting for the dials to get resolved here looks like right now team ireland is down two to one in their round versus germany also when it comes to singapore versus france looks like right now they've split as of right now they've split a single game so one and one and uh looks like in the other matchups between Peru and Italy, Peru does have a win already secured. So that's our latest update there. And like we said already, the United States currently 2-1 versus uh, Switzerland at the moment. No, oh, and that's the yellow T-70 on the rock. They're rolling a crit. I mean, it has shields, it bounces off, but that's not ideal. It doesn't really matter, yeah. Yeah. Is there a maneuver for jungle that will get him in a good position? I think a four straight is probably his best choice, like four straight boost. Yep. Get out of two of the shots, maybe take a range one out the butt. Uh, he's too close to, to do what he probably wants to do, which is like hard turn and get behind. Yeah. I think Rose is debating the coordinate. All right. Which is just a double calculate. Vizmod71 says a donation's on the way. Awesome. Awesome. We're, we're trying to uh, we're trying to see if our, you know our GSP fam can can come together, get them uh, you know get them to uh, a total of of uh, five hundred dollars US donated and I'll, I will match you guys there I guess coordinating the huh? target lock well, target lock I agree with that because Django is going to have a really hard time getting out of Green's arc absolutely and if he corners himself like that I don't think he survives the next round even with the reinforce now he's going to be stressed yeah because he has nowhere to go anymore Looks like Germany also went up two more games over Ireland. Mm -hmm. So I believe that is Germany securing the, the currently 4-1 lead. Uh, it looks like he decided not to reinforce, but to focus instead. Probably smart. You really don't want to be stressed with Django sitting where he's at. Yeah, it just was weird because they were already checking guards, but... I guess the, his opponent was alright with it. Yeah. It's one of the things I do like about this community is like you do something like that and you go like you think better of it because you know it was obvious yeah, you don't absolutely. want to stress angle yep. there. And, and we then got, your opponent usually yeah. just said yeah. We got hit two yeah, crits was... coming in and that red T70 is going to be taken off the board. 
All right. Well, let's go ahead and update that on the overlay. That also takes off Rose's reroll. So Rose now only has a single calculate. That's going to be enough, though. Yep. Spends yep. for two. Django still has a focus defensively. And the force. Let's not forget. But he does not have Lone Wolf, which would be what he needed here, because he spent that to get an offensive mod. That's right. It's another damage. Django down to three, Hull. Next T70. Got some trail mix. I believe Django's down to two, because he's got four cards on him. Spends the lock. That's three hits. You are correct there. This so could... Django needs full paint to survive. Let's paint it up. Gone! Oh, In explosive fashion, Django goes down. That is a 200-63 to 63 victory for Team Peru. Thank you to Iso, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, and Row 6 our Grand Admiral patrons, and all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members. Thank you so much for your support. Gold Squadron out.